And hello everybody, it's Julian from BD Cosmos, and we are back for a third consecutive month of doing five books we want to spec on for the month of, uh, uh, this is, sorry, September releases. So we're July solicitations for, for September release. So I am back here with my friend PF, and we're going to look at five books. How are you doing PF today? I'm doing fine, thanks. Oh, good. So are you ready to spec on five books? <laughs> I am. All right, so what's the first one? I've got the first one typed in here already, you've told me. Yeah, so the first one uh, I am going to be specking on is a book from Red5. Uh, is called Verge. So basically what happens with Verge is a time travel event happens, and the scientists call it Verge, and then you got a whole bunch of time periods just going into New York City. So you got Samurais, Vikings, Caveman, you got, you know, Middle-Aged Man. Everything is in New York City, and you got that one cop, that has to take on the murder of three samurais. Whoa. So, I mean, that that's just you know, adapting that screen that that comic book to a to a TV series is easily done. Yeah, I I get it. It's convergence. They're converging. That's why it's called the verse. It's pretty nifty concept, and it sells itself. Uh, I. I, I, I'm not I've never been a huge fan of red 5 comics uh, some of their books have been hit or miss for me uh, it's red 5 because the guys who built, started the studio are, uh, are are huge Star Wars nerds so it's red 5 based on Luke Skywalker's X-wing red 5 um, so but this concept in, in particular I could totally see CBS doing this exact thing they're they're huge on on uh, uh, crime solving dramas on a weekly basis so yeah I can absolutely see this getting option be transformed into a TV series on a weekly basis yeah it's yeah, it's a great pick uh, I don't know if I can I can match up with your pick here but I'm gonna try to sell you on miles Morales so miles well let me type this out miles is having a costume change with issue 30. And so uh, issue 28 that's coming out soon uh, is the end of the clone saga. Uh, we're issue 29, something's happening with the costume. Issue 30, here you go. After 10 years, he with his with his costume that Sarah Picelli created for him, here he is, Miles, with his brand new costume, which is much more updated to the times. And it gives him his own vibe. Instead of being like a black version of Peter Parker, it's his own character. And it, it does speak to me on, on a Ben Riley sense uh, from the 90s, uh, it, where it, was, it, it had similar vibes as well for that time. But this is his own costume, and I think it's great. Uh, I, I believe that th this is definitely the costume of the future that they're going to pitch for. And that's what probably... If we're very lucky, at the end of the next uh, Into the Spider-Verse movie from Sony, because they've been working on it for already for some time now, so obviously if they're they're, they're filming, they're, they're creating a movie, they can't change the costume. But at the end of the movie, they can certainly present this version of the costume moving forward. Yeah, I mean, after 10 years, um, not that, you know, Miles has been in the shadows of anyone after 10 years, but... You know, it's just a fresh uh, little restart or something like that. And, yeah, I mean, it's uh, we've seen that time and time again where just a costume change or whatever, and the book just, you know, blips up, and then, you know, you pick up a couple bucks here and there. Yeah, absolutely. So what do you got for me next? Uh, next book is going to be a one-shot uh, in prestige format. Okay. So a little more expensive than usual called 10 Years to Death from Aftershock. It's basically just the story of a, uh, a prison guard who has to deal with a mass murderer that's incarcerated in his prison. Um, kind of gives me the, the Shawshank Redemption and Sixth Sense vibe. So, I mean, it, you know, we've seen this kind of story in the, in the, the Green Mile, just an inmate and a, you know, with a prison guard. So, and, you know, obviously Shawshank Redemption, everybody's seen that. So yeah, just uh, I think a little one shot, easy story could be easily transformed into a one into a movie. Uh, just uh, you know, uh, an easy pick. Wow, I have not been able to find this yet. Uh, our, our, I'm surprised. Ten years. So we're, we're looking through. I can't find this. Is this in, in Magic Comics? It is. I I I, I specked on it earlier today. Really? I scrolled ten years with the uh, numbers. Oh, One, two, it's years. ten with the numbers. Oh, that explains so much. Oh, it's right there. It's ten years. Ten years with death. So don't do my mistake. <laughs> Write it correctly. Ten years to death. One shot. Shawshank Redemption meets Sixth Sense. Yeah, 
I can see that also being a movie. Oh, it, it is, like you said, it's slightly more expensive, but it is prestige format. But yeah, uh, that definitely has the vibe to me of, of a movie itself. And, you know, we've seen similar movies in the past, not just Shawshank Redemption, but The Hundred Years of Slave as well. Uh, so yeah, this could definitely be a, an easy easy thing to option from Aftershock, especially being a one-shot. They can take all, use all this material and they can develop it on their own for, for a movie uh, itself. So yeah, definitely a good pick. I would recommend to, to get the getting at least this one single book, and uh, uh, hopefully it'll get multiple printings for you guys to have uh, additional value on your on your first print. So my second print, it's 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 kind of a uh, it's kind of difficult to explain, but I'm gonna tell you guys to, to spec on Red Sonia, number one that comes out in September. It is uh, a new ongoing Red Sonia because it's written by Mirka Donful. And Milka Andonfo has been a hot, hot superstar writer and, uh, and illustrator from Italy. She's done uh, Mercy from Image. She's done Unsacred from A Blaze. Uh, she's done, uh, which is also, uh, it's been, it's it actually from, she's done it in Italy and it was translated in North America as Unsacred from A Blaze. And she's done um, uh, Unnatural as well. That's also from Image. So, she has been on a hot streak that and this is their very first north american title being written by her so uh, i do believe that this particular title being how 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 her name has grown through in the last couple of years being the, the, the this is the first time she'll be writing a, a series for a big brand so it's still dynamite but it, it is still Red Sonia, and there's a new take on the character. Well, it's a continuing take on the character. I honestly believe that years from now, when we'll be talking about uh, the the past illustrators, such we're doing with Rob Liefeld, Mark Silvestri, and, and uh, um, uh, McFarlane, years from now, we'll be, we'll, in the same vein, we'll be talking about Mirka and Dolfo. And so her first ongoing series, she's, she's doing the covers, but she's writing this. I think this has the potential of being huge, but this is a very long-term hold. Yeah, exactly. Like you said, uh, Andolfo uh, has been, you know, popular for uh, her art, her art for uh, you know a short while, a couple of year, uh, years with uh, DC, uh, and in the coming weeks, I do believe there's Sweet Paprika coming yes, out. Yes, that's right, Sweet Paprika, which has also an awesome, awesome special, not safe for work cover. Exactly, and actually, all the covers for Sweet Paprika. There's actually like a, a uh, there's a, uh, a, a there's a, like a contest going on with the illustrators on Twitter, and you have everybody and their mother just doing Sweet Paprikas in not safe for work settings. Oh, I didn't know about that. Yeah, if you go on Twitter and search for Endolfo and mm -hmm. just look at everything that's popping up, you have a bunch of. Uh, Sweet paprika. That is awesome. Yeah, but yeah, no Red Sonia. I mean, I looked it up. The uh, and yeah, her uh, first North American ongoing. Uh, yeah, could be uh, very easily like you said, long term hold. But uh, yeah, I'm uh, I'm not really fond of the cosplay covers, but the original, the cover A is a really a nice uh, a nice one. Uh, fun fact about the cosplay covers. I was reading an article a few weeks back. And uh, every month at FOC, Dynamite sees a spike for the cosplay covers in particular for the past year now, as people have been buying and pre-ordering those specific covers because there haven't been conventions to go to to go see cosplays. So <laughs> Dynamite has been selling more of them just for this reason. So I don't know if that's going to be a long-term thing, but I found it pretty funny. And I was telling Rachel about that, and she also found it really funny because neither of us, just like yourself, are not huge cosplay cover fans, but it seems we're in the minority. <laughs> <laughs> so what's your last pick, sir? Last pick, uh, again, uh, something that could be easily adapted. Uh, I'm going with Maze Book from Jeff Lemire Maze or Book. Lemire, whatever. No, however. Lemire. Yeah, Lemire. So, yeah, uh, just uh, uh, a, a grieving father um, has suspicions that his dead daughter is sending him signals from the afterlife. Uh, and the way it's written that, like, he's... The only way out is in the maze book, which he's writing. 
So the um, this has a vibe to me like if you remember the movie Twenty Three, uh, the number Twenty Three, yes, with Harry, where he was completely bonkers by the end of the uh, the movie. I do believe that this could be like sort of like that, just a a father, a grieving father, just going through the paces and just slowly losing his mind. Mm. At the end, just being redeemed by either, you know, a message that his daughter left in a book or whatever. Just, you know, just... But, uh, yeah, I could easily see this uh, being uh, adapted or optioned and seeing what comes out. With just a, I can see, like, a, a great performance from a Leonardo, Leonardo DiCaprio or something. Just losing his freaking mind all uh, you know, for two hours. And then, boom, at the end, redeemed. Yeah, so, that makes sense. Uh, I, I can't disagree with you. Uh, it, it it just makes sense as a as a movie. I didn't see it until you pitched it to me. Uh, I saw more. Uh, I, I I pitched Primordial, his other series that's an image. So this one's a dark horse. His other series starting that this month is is Primordial. I saw it as a good read. That's why I added it as a top ten book to subscribe to. But yep. May's book is probably a better book to spec on because there are much better chances of May's book becoming a movie than Primordial ever will. Yeah, Primordial. I mean, I was looking it up, and obviously Primordial gives me a vibe like Department of Truth or something, just with the 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 the, the animals. The, yeah, the animals and the, the animals coming back to Earth, and just I I'm, I was feeling like a uh, a vibe of Department of Truth, but May's book just gives me like that that vibe of yeah, okay, that's easily one actor leads the movie, and then you know it's uh, that's just my feel for it. that's just my take on it. Uh, I'll see May's book at Cannes in a few years' time, I'm sure. <laughs> Hopefully. All right. So that is our five books for this month. And I hope you guys are going to uh, also going to subscribe or spec on these books as well. What is your pick for this month? What do you guys want to spec on? Do you feel like, no, you guys missed out. You should have been specking out on this. Please let us know in the comments. Yes, I'm asking you to do stuff in the comments for the first month. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, please let us know if there's anything else you'd like us to add in the following month's video. Thank you so much, everybody, and I, we hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.